You are listening to Radio Cosmos. You're now listening to Bad Radio. Hello and welcome to Bad Radio. Bad stands for Business at a Distance. This is a show about local businesses and business networking. We are here in the News Radio WFLA Orlando studios for a full two hours from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And there's a studio applause. Like that one. It's got good energy. Um, I am your host, Angela Smarito, and in the in with me, I have our producer, Melissa Fox. Hello! And up next, we have Melissa Jacob with Striking Brand. Hello again. Hi. I know. Every week, I got, I have my Melissa. I'm going to call Melissa Squared. <laughs> yes. Um, Melissa's business is Striking Brand, and so she does all of our videos for Bad Radio. So if you go to badradio.com, you get to watch previous episodes of the show. You can also go to strikingbrand.com to see all of her other work because she is a videographer and she is also a photographer. Take the pictures and the video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In studio with me, we have one of our sponsors. Please welcome John Kennedy with Forge IT Consulting. Hey, guys. Mm-hmm. And with him, somebody new. To... We have a newbie. Mm-hmm. So, Craig from True Tech Advisors, how are you? Good, good. A lot of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The so, support. what did you think of the intro? It was awesome. I, I I can rem- I can clearly see the fifth elements, the, uh-huh. the, the Chris Rock sounds, the commercial. It was good. It was so there's really even... Chris Tucker. Get Chris it right. Tucker. Yeah. <laughs> you see, there, I don't Close know enough. if you guys caught, but there was um, a clip of, of um, uh, Zorg in there mm. where he... W- I can't remember which part he said, but he was like... Like something about nice, nice something little ladies. I mean, that's something that people really have to, you know, know that movie well to recognize that. The Chris Tucker stuff is pretty, you know, straightforward. But um, uh, yeah, that's like one of the best movies I think of all time. The blue lady scene was always the one that um, anybody that had a sound system in their house, they would like put the blue lady scene or a scene on and then just blast it out. So, you know, back in the 90s when sound systems were like were a, a big really thing. big thing, mm-hmm. you didn't have like TVs that could rock the whole mm-hmm. entire house. Yeah. We, <laughs> right? I think we spent like five grand on two speakers. I mean, look at TVs now. They all suck. You've <laughs> got to have at least a sound bar. <laughs> oh, that's right. A sound bar. Now, I like we had like the two big old. Oh, yeah. Way better that way. Two big speakers mm-hmm. with that. So, yes, we can still take the paint. What is yeah. that? <gasps> that's a blue lady scene. <laughs> Pull it up for you. Yeah, the best part is when the beat kicks in. Oh, God, are we about to watch this whole thing? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. Well, this portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Frogger's Bar and Grill. If you're looking for a place to go with friends or meet new ones, then you're looking for Frogger's Grill and Bar. With four great locations, there's bound to be one near you. Come with friends or bring the family for some food and fun. And don't miss out on Frogger's amazing menu where everything is fresh, never frozen. Um, Mount Dora, Oviedo, Apopka, and Altamont Springs. Froggers, hopping with food and fun. All right, so Melissa's gotten up, and we're just about to do the networking news. <laughs> so, Where are you going? I'm so sorry. It's the first time in nah, 40, thought- 40 something episodes. I was like, mm-hmm. did I turn the cameras on? Oh, yes, I did, guys. Oh, I did. Don't worry. I thought you were fishing up the DVD oh. of Fish Fifth Element no, for us. The DVD. <laughs> That's a little concerned for a second. I'm good, though. I'm good. All right. <laughs> networking news, and I'm in there. So All right. this. Um, Right now, we're going to go to Networking News. It is brought to you by Live Your Best Life. Live Your Best Life is an independent advocate for Green Compass USDA certified organic hemp products. They offer a complete range of products, including hemp wellness, targeted health, personal care, performance, even products for our furry friends. So puppies and kitty cats, you're in there. To get more information on these products or becoming a consultant, you can call our friend Terry at 407 616-3145. Six one six three one four five. So I got the um, CBD for the for the pets. Okay. I got it. Yeah, I came in. You have several too, don't yeah, you? Yeah, it's for our dog Roxy. Do you guys have animals? Yeah, I do. yeah. Dog uh, my dog Roxy. She's I guess she's about eleven now, but she's been just you know like just she's gotten really nervous in her older age, and like don't even get me started with the fireworks. She used to not care oh, about yeah. loud noises. Now, if I drop a plate or something, I mean, anything that's like loud, she jumps. And Aww. so. How old um, is she? She's older? She's 11. Okay. I mean, she's a Shiba Inu, so they're oh, supposed okay. to live like oh, forever. Longer. But um, anyway, so the, it has helped a lot. I noticed that really? she. Really? Yeah. You can tell the difference. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I mean, I've only given her like 
a couple because I'm scared that I don't want to get her all stoned or anything. <laughs> but, you know. um, I mean, where's the harm? <laughs> She's just going to be extra calm. Great right? Night. Pretty much. <laughs> but anyway, so far so good. I'll keep you guys, you know, looped on it. So what do we got for the networking news So for news networking today? news this time, I wanted to just share some strategies because sometimes we get a little lost on like, what are some really good tips on networking? Um, uh, one of the top tips, and this is from Indeed.com, so reliable okay. source. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the One of the first tips I saw was join a networking group. And I feel like Ooh. everybody in here... Right? Most part. That four. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> I, I, felt a little, time. Yep. I felt a little tension. Yeah, a little bit earlier. B and I. The, so maybe B and I. The B and I gods. <laughs> <laughs> maybe B and I might not be your thing, but um, a networking group. So um, Angela and I are both part of B and I as well. Right? Okay. I am so, as well. So, um, and BNI is you have a chapter for, you have several chapters in different areas, and each chapter can only have one person in a certain field. So um, I'm photography in my chapter. There's no one else that can be in photography. Yeah. So category exclusive. Right. Thank you. So um, just being in a group like that is really helpful because you have the same sorts of people that you can like um, build a connection with. Mm -hmm. The second thing is growing a database of professional contacts. So again, BNI is really good at that. Mm -hmm. um, not just in your chapter, but something that I love doing is going to other chapters, mm -hmm. and you can build that um, that database with other BNI members right. that are close to well, you. Well, that's what we talked about last week. I said that I got a guy. Remember, that's kind of like somebody that somebody says is they know that Angela's got a guy, so right. my sister will reach out to me. Hey, who do you know that does fencing? Or you know, I, and so I'm. It, what's great though is that I'm like, ooh, that's a referral. That's a referral. That's mm -hmm. a referral. So I can log them. So that's why I'm always like in the green for B and I is because you absolutely are is because I am <laughs> I've so, got a guy so I've got my networking right of so B and winning B and I member uh, yes right. absolutely right I, I need a hat or something exactly. second annual a badge gold badge <laughs> <laughs> um, so the next thing is to attend conventions and conferences and that was another thing that we were just talking about like you might not be so down with that but it's a really good way to expand your group of people that you're uh, in contact with i don't know what do you guys think about like like conventions and things like that as far as networking tools i think you have to have the type of personality where you're going to just strike up conversations with people that are there and have a good time and you know <clears throat> network mm -hmm. while you're there if you're the type of person that's more like me that's going to go learn a whole lot but not really meet a whole lot of people eh, it's not so great on the networking mm -hmm. side but it is still good for learning yeah see i am a very social person but i i get i we've talked about this a little bit last week is i get overwhelmed with all mm -hmm. the background noise so I have a hard time focusing. <laughs> you, I, you know what? I think I probably do need to get checked out. Because <laughs> I realize that I'm, like, I'm really obsessed over certain things. Right. And I'm just like, okay, maybe that's not normal. But that's where I have a hard time is that with so much noise and stuff going on, I have a hard time focusing on just the person that's right in front of me. Right. I think you probably have to have like a mission. Like mm -hmm. I would have to be like specifically hunting out a specific type of person mm -hmm. and try to get close to them. Yeah. <laughs> like another thing we were talking about last episode is you could talk to the organizer of the event and say, Hey, this is what I do. Do you know? I think that's a who fantastic a good, idea. Yeah. Who'd be a good connection for me because they usually are going to know a lot more about the people who are involved and be able to kind of give you that like cliff notes. Like, okay, this is who you need. So you're not having to like kind of figure it out. You're also your tend to be meeting people that are doing things that are closer to what you already do. Mm -hmm. So like when I go to a conference that's IT related, I'm meeting other IT companies primarily, not people that are going to be potential clients or p people that are necessarily going to refer to me much. But I can learn from them and they can learn from me and sometimes refer, especially when, you know, we're in different areas. Sure. Right. Yeah, definitely. Right, right, right. All right. So the next thing um, is to set up informational interviews. So that's, yep. Oh, that's just part of BNI as well. It's built in. So that's for us, it's called one-to-ones. Mm -hmm. So th those are actually the biggest thing for me is having those separated like lunch, breakfast, you know, sorts of meetings with people where you can really get to know them and know what they do and, See yeah. how you can help each other. No, I think that like those one-to-one -one meetings are fantastic for that. So that music means that we are going to break. So stay tuned because you know what? When we get back, we're going to be talking about some IT stuff. And I know that might not sound super exciting, but trust me, you're going to want to listen to this. So stay tuned.
Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And welcome back. This portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore. Spring is in the air, so now is the time to head to Premier Couple Superstore with a huge selection of lingerie, shoes, toys, games, love oils, and a ton of great gifts. Premier Couple Superstore has got what you want. You don't pay those high prices because you go directly to the source. And be sure to ask about their loyalty program. 5009 South OBT or shop online at premiercouples.net because a couple that plays together stays together. I like that. Yeah. When we do that, when we cut that commercial, I want to try to add Join that. Join it in. <laughs> mm-hmm, definitely. All right. So we are back with John and Craig, and both John and Craig are in the IT business. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Hey, why we're starting did, out with the easy well, questions. Uh, why, did you have to, why did you have to think about that? <laughs> well, we are in very different parts of IT. Okay. Well, before we jump into all that, let's, let's talk about that. So you're Forge IT Consulting and you're True Tech Advisors. So tell us that, what's the difference between those two businesses? So I do uh, IT work that is not phones and not anything having to do with web browsing, but any, or rather uh, websites and web design. So I see it as IT as a continuum of, of various different things. You've right. got phones, networking, computers, um, servers, cloud hosting, cloud services, websites. Mm-hmm. I'm like in this range. <laughs> right. No, no. Okay, that makes so sense. So I don't do phones. I don't do web design, but I do all those other things that connect to the internet and all the networking behind it. Right. Craig, on the other hand. I don't do IT. I know. <laughs> At, nope. We, I, we just handle the phone services. So mm-hmm. we're more of uh, consultants specifically in that area. So if, if a company is kind of, they don't know what to do, we we don't sell our own product. We don't necessarily say use our service. So you're a phone broker? We are. So, however, because we can sell everything, it allows us to give you know honest feedback. Well, this company would be best for your needs oh, and, and things it. like that. Because it doesn't matter to us which company they choose. Right. Right. So curious, are like phone systems like that becoming obsolete because everybody has their cell phone? So a lot of the times people are wanting to stay connected to the system. So whenever somebody calls in, nobody wants to hear, hey, call that number instead. They're wanting mm-hmm. to be connected to that Oh, I know. It pisses person. me off if I call somebody and they're like, oh, can you hang up and dial this number? I'm like, no, you can connect. Yeah. Me. Forward yeah. me. Over. <laughs> and it's really funny because there's actually a wave that comes in because like when somebody first starts, they'll use their cell phone, like on a one person business, right? And then as they grow a little bit, they'll they'll get a couple of phones and then they'll almost outgrow that and go back to cell phones. And then they realize they have a problem and go back to a phone system. <laughs> it's a it, process. It always works out in that same kind of yeah. flow. It's like, well, it depends on where you're at. Yeah. So you, see the, yet. you yep. see the people going back to cell phones and you're like, you'll be back. You will. <laughs> because they never actually get rid. It's like they had three phones and then now they have six people, seven yeah. people. Well, now that's not enough. Right. Instead of readdressing it, they're going to you know, band-aid it until it. they actually re- revisit that solution down Probably, the road. Probably, yeah, like small businesses mm-hmm. too. Like, I mean, that's a oh, thing. Yeah. It's like until you absolutely need it. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely <laughs> no true. doubt. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been in a business where like working in this building where you just would pick up the phone and hit the extension that you'd want to get to. And we used it all the time. Um, but when I worked at the other radio group, we hardly ever used the main lines. In fact, I don't, I think that when I left, there I had like fourteen hundred unlistened to messages mm-hmm. on because I didn't never I couldn't figure out how to use it, and they never gave us any training. So <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. oh. and honestly, that's ninety percent of the solutions that we get comes from, okay, the way that this was set up was done in such a way that we don't love it, mm-hmm. and so it's not really what we were sold. It's not what we feel like, you know, we were having the conversation with. And it's not that they don't have those tools. It's just nobody's kind of explained, here's how you get from point A to point B on those tools. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. What are some of the advantages of having an internal phone system versus just, I mean, the only thing I can think of is like the intercom kind of thing. (laughs) Yes, that's that's not a big one, to be honest. No. Really? Um, (laughs) I'd have a blast with it. No, I mean, (laughs) it it depends on the kind of businesses that you use. Because if you have construction, well, there's a lot of people out there who's probably on their cell phone. They're not. That's not really. Uh, but remember, next cells, those were the bomb. Oh, yeah. Yes, walkie talkie phones. Uh-huh. Those are awesome. <laughs> like, walkie talkies in general are awesome. But that's. I can't tell if he's, being, if he's being serious or if he's being serious. I think he's being serious. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it, it, I, I get that a lot. Awesome. I don't know if you're kidding or not. I know. Halfway, <laughs> it's okay. Like, do I pick up a little bit of sarcasm, or is that not consistent? Yes, okay. you'll hear that. Yeah, <laughs> this is gonna be the theme for the for the day. Okay, cool. I'm like, okay, is he making fun of me or not? I don't know. I would tell say that it was probably the auto attendant. Auto attendant is huge. What <laughs> to do be you honest mean? With you, like the auto, it's like the person talking? that comes on and says thank you for calling oh. is one of like the main reasons. I would say that it it honestly depends on the kind of business that you have because. Some people don't have a choice. Everyone has to have a phone and they're working on their phone and they don't have a, have a choice to mm-hmm. be, I mean, they could be on their cell phones, mm-hmm. but it just doesn't make sense for their, their line of work, you know, for a law office or things like that where they're constantly on the phone. Mm-hmm. You know, those are, are really the places that makes the most sense to have a phone system as you get bigger, mm-hmm. just to have people be able to navigate getting to that. Because honestly, in all of this, it's really just how can, what experience do you want the customer to have whenever they dial that number from mm-hmm. that point forward what would you like them to experience right no i think that's cool what kind of synergies do you guys have together i mean like if if you're working with a company and you see that they've got i mean did the, the, these two are do they connect in any way absolutely i mean there's tons of it companies out there that specifically do provide their own phone services a because you can make a lot of money doing it and b is because it very i mean it's a lucrative field it can be very lucrative yes it can be, yes. Uh, I mean, how long have uh, you been doing it? Uh, five years now. All right, then you're doing good. <laughs> so, I mean, essentially, the thing about it that makes it an interesting business is that it, it's not something where um, where we have to continually grow if we don't want to, um, mm-hmm. because it's because as a broker we're, we're just getting kind of a residual piece of the business. At some point, it kind of grows to where your base is coming in, and as long as you take care of your customer base, mm-hmm. that they're not going to want to leave and go somewhere else they're like consistent wait, wait, it's so, like a, yeah exactly yeah. yeah so it's not like they buy the system and then you wipe your hand or you know you're like okay then on to the next it's no. like it's like a, is it a renting kind of thing no, and no, you it's make phone a phone service so it's like right. a monthly yeah like you have to pay for your phone services i thought like you were talking about the hardware all no, of no 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 oh, okay <laughs> i mean the hardware is a part of it because people need hardware right but i mean I think to your point, there's a lot of people who are using their computer today and just having a headset and making calls straight through the computer instead, which is, again, the same the same service. It's just, do you want a phone with that or do you want to call from a computer? Mm. Or do you want to call from your cell phone and use the company number? Mm. And that's exactly what I use it for and recommend to uh, lots of companies on a regular basis. It's I prefer having my cell phone be my personal number and my business number being the business number, whether I'm sitting at my desk using my phone, whether I'm Mm -hmm. on a computer, whether I'm on my cell phone, it's all the same number for my business separate from my personal, even if it's literally both numbers on the same Mm -hmm. cell phone. Well, I know I have you in twice. I have you like John Mm -hmm. 4JT and then I have you John BNI, but is it the same number? No. Okay. Two different numbers. All right. But it does it go to it goes to the same place? I have place. them both on my phone. Mm-hmm. Okay. The one thing I did notice is like you you text me earlier and I was driving, so I just hit call, mm-hmm. but I wasn't able to do that because it went to your voicemail and I had to hit one. But <laughs> you, I didn't want to have to hit a button. Yeah, I was yeah. trying not to <laughs> look at my phone <laughs> while I was driving. Right. So that's when I waited to text you or text you when I got to a stop. Right. Um so you said that there's a lot of synergies. And is is I mean, what are some of the other ones? I well, think we're gonna become to break where we have like a minute left. One minute, she gave me the finger. It's this one, though. <laughs> I do that well. Yeah. It's a nice one. It was my the pointer. Nice huh? That's a good one. So at least it's the nice finger. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then the music comes on, and if we don't go to break in time, then we get our our hand slapped because, mm-hmm. and I just took up 30 seconds now, so she's going to start much. the music here. <laughs> no, you still got a, a little under a minute. <laughs> do we have no time to ask another question? Not really. Oh, I don't know. Think of a good cliffhanger. The teaser one. Uh-huh. I want to talk about chat GBT. I know. She's just but, she's holding I'm on like, we, we haven't actually even answered your question yet. Okay. Well, you know what? <laughs> There's our cliffhanger <laughs> because who's going to answer? Wait, it's what's just, the question? What was I was going to say that. What are other synergies or between the two businesses? Right. I remember oh, that. That's good stuff. <laughs> Both Melissa's, what was it's, the question? so much sarcasm today. <laughs> no, no, that was straight out sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So you guys, last week, though, just so you know, it was a straight up full moon. Remember how everything was just wonky? Is that what from, it was? We couldn't even get I have a really good, but, yeah. interesting fact that my son told me, he's 10, that Easter is always the first Sunday following the full moon 
after spring. You know That's the weirdest thing. I could tell you true. why, but Ooh, we're gonna all right, have to there's find a cliffhanger. Out we're going to find out the Why is Easter when it is? Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you. These druids didn't have it wrong. All right, speaking of which, these druids will be back in a few minutes, and uh, we are Bad Radio. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And welcome back. This portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by none other than Forge IT Consulting, providing a fully outsourced ID to, I, IT department. I'm going to mess up his live right while he's sitting here. Mm. IT department with a personal touch for small business. No company is too small. ForgeITConsulting.com. Um, just real quick, tell everybody what IT stands for. Information technology. There you go. See, I don't even have to do your live read because you're here to talk about it. That's Yay. true. So, so <laughs> let's not get distracted. Let's talk about mm-hmm. the cliffhanger. Okay, so why is Easter always the Sunday after the full moon? Well, back in the day, perhaps you remember Stonehenge. Yeah, all, <laughs> all these people drew from all kinds of counties and, and cities from outside. And basically, they had a huge orgy on Easter. Easter representing birth. The rabbit mm-hmm. is a, to do with the rabbit died, so to speak, because oh. that's how they you should do, uh, you know, whether or not they were pregnant test by killing the rabbit. So oh, I didn't know that part. Mm-hmm. So this whole thing was a huge, just, I mean, an orgy, literally. <laughs> Eggs, fertilization. <laughs> fertilization, the whole part. thing. That's where Easter really comes Chocolate from. Chocolate puts you in the mood. <laughs> I don't think I believe this, Melissa. <laughs> yeah, I, think I think it's true. Might want to look it up. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to tell your son not to tell people that story. <laughs> now, now, this is just sort of about the East. Easter is like when the services are. <laughs> He's like, I was being very Christian. Well, the early church definitely co opted a heck of a lot of uh, mm-hmm. uh, ceremonies that were not Christian. Not at all. <laughs> so they, they basically would come, they'd feast, they'd mm, with another feast. F, and yeah. uh, they'd feast. Mm-hmm. feast, and, feast and then they would go know. back pregnant and ready to start the spring. Wow. Yeah, you went totally in a direction that yeah, I was like. Oh, you were all like chocolate going? bunny ears and stuff. I got you. No <laughs> I thought worries. this was going to be like an astrology type of thing. It's going to be a quiz <laughs> oh, no, later. Right? Okay, quiz later. All right, now let's get back to uh, bad radio. All right, well, thank you for that. Um, all right, so we are talking about IT and phone systems, and we are here with John with Forge IT Consulting and Craig with True Tech Advisors. So, Craig, we were laughing at the phone in here, but well, like I said, I know I still want to talk about this energies, but tell me why you're laughing at the phone in here. Well, it's, I mean, for starters, the the buttons on the phone look as though they're they're humongous buttons. <laughs> I mean, that by itself is worthy of acknowledgement and humor. Um, <laughs> but the the dust on it is really what um, gives it away as a non used uh, item. Prop are you that talking sits in the about? middle of the, of the, of the phone. Yeah. That's for aesthetic. <laughs> exactly, the prop. Exactly. Yeah, it's just a prop phone. It really doesn't work yeah. in there. It's just for looks. <laughs> and it looks great. And it does look Once great. Once you puff the dust off it. <laughs> well, let me. What, what do you think that iHeart pays for that? I have no they bought way. them a long time ago. <laughs> I mean, There's nothing off. now. That, that, nothing. Uh-huh. At this point, they've owned them for some they, time. They, <laughs> oh, okay. So, they own them outright. Yeah, That's if, like a if they were still own? leasing that, that would just be really, really sad. Yeah. Oh, so bad. like, what are we talking about? Like the early 2000s? Some people actually just get, they sign a lease for their phones, but then they never really revisit that. And then like a decade later, they're still paying for a lease on a phone. <laughs> Yeah, like, not like that here. That? But yeah. they bought everything. They absolutely bought new ones in uh, the pandemic because I guess they had to spend money. Mm-hmm. But yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing works. <laughs> yeah, that's just crazy. I was wondering too. Like we were talking about, is this necessary for all the equipment and stuff in here? Because I always, I know that like phone lines are important because people will say it's hardwired or whatever. Is that the actual phone line? That's not. Is it? You said ether. ether? This is VoIP, voice over the internet, basically. Correct. All right, you got to talk to me now. It's your turn to talk. <laughs> All right, so where would you like to start? We uh, had a bunch of questions. Yeah. <laughs> All right, organize, organize. First, let's, let's answer that question. So what is the difference between, like, the phone outlet like that, or the, the mm-hmm. one for the computer? There, you have, like, the, mm-hmm. what do you call it, Ethernet? So voice over IP versus a, a, a on-prem system. So someone may buy a phone system and then have the, like, the brains of that system somewhere, so to speak be on premise and then all of the phones are connected back to that and that's how it gets all of its information. Voice over IP services are essentially where the phone system sits 
in a data center somewhere so that you don't have any physical equipment other than phones here in the building. Is that what that is? This is actually a hybrid, as she was saying, which is somewhere in the middle. There is equipment somewhere here, but it also runs off the internet, not to get too technical. Yeah, I could get real technical in there and (laughs) and explain that, no, voice over IP is just a protocol and the phone, this phone, because it uses an ethernet cable, is definitely a voice over IP phone. It just doesn't connect to a cloud service. It connects to a a phone service, a uh, phone system here on on premises. On-prem. I'm just mm-hmm. so glad that there's people like you that really understand this stuff. Right. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> I just want to pick up the phone and use it. Yeah. Yes, I, I mean that's, that's true, funny. and that's why he exists. Our <laughs> website just says, "Be happy with your phones again." Yeah, right. nice and simple. Because that's really what people are doing most of the time. There are a lot of advantages that once you have it, you're like, "I'm glad that I have these tools." But most people just kind of want it to work. Yeah, and they're frustrated whenever it doesn't. Well, that's. I mean, I, I. I Take it back. I did use the phone at my previous employers a couple of times, but there was a lag. And mm. like when I dialed, like if I hit a number, you'd hear the beep a little bit. Mm. There was a lag in that, and then it just wouldn't, pro- you know, go right. And so I just gave up. And that's when I was like, I'm not, I'm done with this. And when I tried to tell somebody about it, you know, you know, Joe from, you know, who's been retired from mm-hmm. IT. <laughs> comes in and takes a look at it and he's like oh it's working fine there you go i was like yeah okay i'd be willing to bet that because that place uh was an office here in florida for a company based in what was it new york yeah that the phone system was of this type and it was based in new york Mm. and so as a result your phone was trying to connect to a server up in new york and that was what was causing the delay see i i like i said i didn't even know that i know that they wanted us to use it, but it just wouldn't ever work right. So mm-hmm. I just relied on my cell phone, and that, that's fine. I was outside sales, so, you know, <laughs> I'm driving around. So And my cell phone is my work phone. My It's my personal phone. It's everything. Um, so that works out fine. But, I mean, so let, let's talk about, like, how these two work together a little bit. So I have a perfect example that happened as I was coming here today. Somebody had that I was working with on um, kind of getting, getting their stuff together sent me something that said, hey, we just got this other quote from a company, uh, won't say the name, and it's a it's an, another IT service. And essentially what they did was they quoted them a whole new network, but then also phone service. Mm-hmm. And so I, I told them, I said, well, I'm not really sure about that a lot of the top part because it's all just, you know, IT setting up their firewall, running cables, things right. like that. Um, and I said, so I can show this to, to John today, mm-hmm. get an idea of, you know, if they're, gouging you or if that's right. the you know correct price or if that's you know not what you guys need those types of things just to kind of run it by him because that's the IT side mm-hmm. and so that's how we're, they're actually really closely related and a lot of companies will sell the two only only being kind of an expert in one but it just is easy no that makes sense while you're there to get extra business from them mm-hmm. exactly and the the major thing you have to understand about um, voice over IP phones is because they work over the internet because you have to have a good network and a good internet connection in order to use them it means that either your phone guy needs to really understand networking mm-hmm. or your networking guy needs to understand phones or like we do he understands phones, <laughs> I understand networking, and we just handle it separately as our own specialties. Mm-hmm. All right. So, like I said, they do work well together. And so, is that how you guys network together? Is mm-hmm. like that will come in and then you'll take a look at it. So, does that happen to you a lot? I mean, is there a lot of like phone salespeople out there that are constantly going into your clients and trying to get them? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, the thing is, is again, it's, it's, it's one of those things that most people, when they get this type of information, hey, this is kind of what we do. They're just looking to kind of hand them off. And like you said, here's your your service. You can go with them. You guys have a great day. That's hard because, again, the determination of whether someone's happy with their system or not almost always is that time right after the sale, right? Who's setting up that system? How do you make sure that it gets from, okay, here's your signature to, okay, now everything works? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the thing that, that we do I don't know really anybody else who does. So no matter right. who you go with, we're coming in to put all that data in there, set up the call flows, okay. make sure everything is going, show you guys how to use the application, mm-hmm. those types of things. Right. So let's talk a little, little bit about that when we get back. Because I, like I said, I'm curious about, so once it's sold, you go back on the backside and make sure everything's running the way it needs to. 
Right. Hey, Melissa, did I see you on your phone trying to confirm my pagan story? Uh, of course. Was I right? You're right on. I was right on. New <laughs> life. Mm. You're welcoming. Oh, uh, listening. What? You're listening to bad what? radio. Well, you know, when you're right, you're right. Goodness. You know. Anyway, we'll be right back. Stay right there. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. Welcome back. And this portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Ground Up Property Services. Rick Hall and his team are ready to give your lawn that just stepped out of the salon look. With this crazy weather, your lawn may not be looking at its best. Ask about the new lawn painting service as well. We did have uh, Rick on the other day, and he does actually paint your lawn. And if you've got brown spots... They'll be green. Um, and then you, they also have their um, irrigation membership program. So make sure and make sure everything is running as it should. You can reach Ground Up Property Services at 407-468-4295 or groundupinc.net. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that that's a thing. You know what I mean? That, like I said, if you've got an event coming up or you're going to have pictures taken or anything like that, then he can come out there and, and fix your lawn right up for those pictures. So we're back from break now, and we are here with John and Craig talking about some IT stuff. And right now what we're talking about really is like some synergies between phone systems and computer systems. Um, where did we leave off? We were talking about some synergies. What are some of the other things that, like you said, the IT and, and phone systems come together? I think John was saying a second ago, because everything with the voice over IP services run off of the data, a lot of the times what will happen is I'll set everything up and I'll I'll plug it in, and if things don't come up, I'll I'll say, "Hey, John, they need they need you," mm-hmm. yeah. because that's pretty much how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, if the firewall is blocking it or something like that, then it's just going to stop that traffic. Is it really pretty complicated? It should not be. No, oh. no. It okay. depends on the complication of the uh, network that you're you're working on. Some businesses they have a complicated network, and so therefore it gets complicated. Right. A lot of smaller businesses don't, and so it's not. Mm-hmm. It, it just really depends. So, and what we were talking about before is once once you go a business, you sell them a system, right? And then the hardware gets installed and things are up and running. And then you go back in and you make sure. Yeah, that's that's the kind of the piece of this that I'm, I mean, selfishly, I just don't want to lose customers. And so we'll go back I, as many times as we need to get things going. Um, we don't we don't charge them for any of it. So well, that's cool. I mean, no, I think that's fantastic because I can tell you right now that if with my past experience, that's never happened. It's like here's the system, here's the link to learn how to use it. You know, that's the part right there that I I don't even understand. Like here's the link because this is how it works all the time. Mm-hmm. Just, here's the link to go learn how to use the system to set up your system. That uh, that sounds so scary to me to just be like, <laughs> well, hey, let me base a, your business off of this. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. if you're checklist. not a techie person. Like you said, I want to. I would. I just want to use it. I just want it to work. I mean, yeah. even, I even went to him when I I was unhappy with one that I had researched on my own. I said, Craig, I don't like this. These are the reasons <laughs> why I don't like it. Where should I go? And he tells me the one that I'm on now, and mm-hmm. I've been much happier. And in any time I have a problem, I can still call him and say, Hey, I don't know how to do this thing, and he knows. Yeah. Having uh, that is, is huge. Yes. You know what I'm actually, it's like connecting is that it's a phone service. So I, I meant you can sell me a phone service that's on my phone mm-hmm. for bad radio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's where, cause I'm still processing this as the phone service that, you know, you, yeah. you have an office, every office has the, the standard mm-hmm. company issued phone. Right. You have an extension. I'm extension 214 right. or whatever, right. you, you know, that's how that all works. This, we're, this is Way more than that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, so because I am constantly, you know, out and about, it doesn't make sense for me to have an actual desktop phone in my office. Mm-hmm. So this becomes my desktop phone. I can see when someone's or your, calling. Or your computer, right? Or my computer. But right. again, I'm not there. So I can see when someone's calling me, if it's calling my work phone, technically, or if they're calling my personal phone. Will so it I can say see just, phone or work on yep, there when mm-hmm, it pops up? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I can see what it is. But again, a lot of other people, a lot of... People don't want their cell phone out. So like attorneys having to mm-hmm. make phone calls at after hours, they can just use that platform, call using the company number. So that way, whoever their client is, isn't seeing their personal number. If they tried calling them back, it would go to the office and they would go. Oh, okay. So we'll say the phone's, okay, that right. that actually was very cool. Yeah, yeah. So it allows the 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 person getting the call not to know the, the actual number of the person calling mm-hmm. them. It's, See, it's just showing yeah. the company number. I actually... 
didn't realize that, that you could do that. Because mm-hmm. like even this morning I had a situation where I, my phone started ringing and it was just somebody had found my number. Because I, I used my number. I put it on social media. And it, you know, <laughs> he's and, shaking his head. Huh? <laughs> he's saying, no, because I, I mean, I'm in sales, that. so but, you know, I need so people. Mm-hmm. I, I have a personal number, and kind of like this, but I, I have the company number that if you call, it goes mm-hmm. through the you know the normal mm-hmm. system. But then I have a personal number that is is just for my work personal number. So I give that number out, and it goes directly to my phone. It's just to me, mm-hmm. but it's not my cell phone. And so at any point in the day, I can just go silence that, mm-hmm. and then I don't get work calls anymore. Is it the expensive? separation is huge? No. And no, and actually, that part of it is not even like priced differently. It comes all included. So, right. so it's, and that honestly is the biggest piece of all of it, right? Because you're the perfect example. You, I, I could guarantee you that the voice over IP service that you've had before offers this thing but because no one's like let me explain how this works you just don't use it you don't know about it and so therefore Mm -hmm. the tools don't exist to you um i definitely want to talk to you though because i didn't realize that that was even an option that i could actually have a number that i could put on like my social media platforms and not have to put my personal cell phone Mm -hmm. and not get calls and still be able to have your cell phone on and not Mm -hmm. completely silent and be able to tell the difference is you're you're making a change on an app on your phone rather than for the whole phone well i mean there's some serious creepers out there too that are you know and i'm like but again it's one of those things where you have to I don't want to miss the p- opportunity for business. So what I'm, you could do just in this one environment is have like an an daytime and nighttime even thing. So if they call you after a certain time, they're like, "Hey, you've called me after hours, mm-hmm. so just leave a message. I'll get that message and I'll give you a call back." Right. And just to kind of have everything again, I, kind of the, going back to the original question: well, What do you want the experience of that caller to be? Right. You want them to be able to get a hold of you, but you want them to get a hold of you when, when you're available and, and it makes sense. And right. if it's outside of that, you still want them to be able to leave a message that you can get back to them at your convenience. Right. Mm-hmm. Like all of those things, just giving the caller the experience that, that you'd expect to, to have that they'd expect to have, I should say. Right. So uh, tell me, a, a minute, what is like a perfect um, referral for you? Honestly, again, anybody who's looking in the area saying we're not happy with what we have here, we're not, we we don't really want to take the time to do the research to figure it all out, but we don't love it. Mm-hmm. That's um, usually the is it just point. Central Florida? Well, Central Florida is the area that we would go to actually help them set everything up physically. Once everything is in place, like we'll still make changes for them and do all of those things. That can be outside of Central Florida, mm-hmm. but for the going to make sure that their phones are okay that service we'd have to be in central Florida yeah for. what are some of the things that you do to let people know besides you know john <laughs> um mm-hmm. or some of the things that you that get to bu- your business name out honestly i would say that 90 percent of the stuff that we get is just word, word of, of mouth, mouth. yeah mm-hmm. like like one person tells another that's almost all of our business today and then we do we do email marketing as well but but most of it is just mm-hmm. like, like this customer said hey i know somebody who mm-hmm. did this for right me. Yeah, well, I mean, that's that's really the way so much of that works. I was talking with my husband about that today because he works for um, a, a design firm, and and he, they have you know like three to f- they're working on like I think uh, three and a half programmers, and I'm like, and so you says you know your business is sustained and everybody's got enough work, but without it without an active salesperson. And um, I have so many, so many people would love to be in that position <laughs> because it's hard, especially if you got people out there selling against you. Because, like you said, so it's got to be reputation, got to be the word of mouth, and it's also got to be the quality of the work. Because, like I said, if it if you're if you're not performing, then nobody's going to pass your pass your business card, right? Every single small business, every small business owner is a salesman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, well, let everybody know, because this portion of the show is going to be wrapping up, but how to get in touch with you. So you, like you said, you got time to give all of your contact information out. You uh, can, the like, best way is email, craig.carter at truetechadvisors.com. Um, that's the best way to get a hold of me, uh, to just kind of set up some time for me to get to understand your business, understand what it is that you do, how you utilize your phones, mm-hmm. and then... So we can kind of brainstorm on what makes the most sense. Mm-hmm. So, so Craig.Carter at TrueTechAdvisors.com. 
All right. Well, that's the end of the first hour. So thank you, Craig, for joining Absolutely. us. Absolutely. It was fun. But, fine. John, you're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. You're stuck with us for another hour. We've got lots of time <laughs> uh -huh. I know. It's going to be a fun hour. All right. So everybody stay tuned, as we, and we're going to be launching into the second hour of Bad Radio coming up. Well, that sounds fun. You better stay tuned. we got the top of the hour news coming, and then Bad Radio will return to your radio. News Radio, WFLA, Orlando. You are listening to Radio Cosmos. <laughs> You are now listening to Bad Radio. Welcome back as we launch into the second hour of Bad Radio. I'm going to run through all the regular info for those of you who have just joined us. I'm Angela Smarito, your host, and we, our producer is Melissa Fox hello. over in the studio. And then we have Melissa Jacob here. Hello, hello. And Melissa's business is Striking Brand. Striking Brand has done all of Bad Radio's videos since... Since we started doing videos, so um, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you can find them all on badradio.com. And then you can also find all of Melissa's work on strikingbrand.com. So she has, she's a photographer as well as a videographer. All right, so we're back now, and we are here with just John with Forge IT Consulting. And um, I called John earlier in this week because I wanted to talk to him about some ideas that I wanted to talk about today just to make sure that, that he was okay with it. And so what we're going to talk about today is some AI stuff. Yeah. So I I always I'm get excited. it wrong, but it's like Chat GPT is yeah. GBT GP. GPT GPT. Mm -hmm. That's the big craze right now. Right. Okay. And so let's just start talking about it. Like I, my daughter Anna introduced me to it mm -hmm. at first, like two weeks ago, and I was blown away. <laughs> so what is it first? So first of all, it is a large language model, an LLM. So this is a particular type of AI that is based off of giving it just a ton of text and being able to decipher things and talk about things based off of that text that it has already ingested. Mm -hmm. um, it's not truly thinking for itself so much as it is being able to take that text and be able to manipulate it and... Uh, understand it well enough to converse with it. Right. But obviously it's not perfect and it can get things wrong. Yeah. And even when it is wrong, it will be confidently wrong. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, cause like I figured it out. I figured out where it does, how it doesn't understand things. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, I was like, cause I was trying to write commercial copy. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, it was for a 501c3 through, you know, for a nonprofit. And I just, I gave it keywords mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, if it the keywords, if it was a business, what it spit out for a thirty second commercial would make sense, but it didn't make sense for a nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So I had to feed it a couple more things. And at one point, I was just like, it, it was for the Restoration Association of Florida. So I can say, you know, I'm like, well, what is the Restoration Association? And it, it told me exactly what it was. Right. And then I was like, okay, so write a thirty second commercial for you know membership, or you know what I mean, and. It, yeah. I asked it to create an intro for Bad Radio, a funny one. Uh -huh. Do you want to hear it? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to do an intro for you, Chat GPT style. Welcome to Bad Radio, the station that's so bad it's good. If you're looking for top quality ra radio programming, you've come to the wrong place. But if you're in the mood for some laughs, some groans, and some head scratching moments, then you're in luck. Join us as we take you on a wild, unpredictable ride through the wacky world of bad radio. From cheesy jokes to bizarre music, we've got it all. So sit back, relax, and get ready to have some fun, or at least laughs at our expense. <laughs> this is Chat GPT's bad radio intro. And you know what? There might be some other radio out there that's bad radio that's not BAAD, yeah. that's not business at a distance. And he probably took from Cold. that mm -hmm. because the uh, the large language model for Chat, Chat GPT ended, I believe it was late 2019. I think it said 2021. It, uh, it depends on which version right. we're talking about. It, I might be thinking of ChatGPT3. Mm -hmm. But the point is that um, it's only as good as the data that it's fed. Yeah. And if the data that it's fed doesn't include whatever it is that you want to talk about, well, it's, it's going to try to pull something else mm -hmm. that might sound similar mm -hmm. and just be wrong. Yeah. Well, I noticed that it does make assumptions, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting because I'll ask it a question that says, well, I don't know that, but this, 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 and this, mm -hmm. which again, I thought was interesting um, because it was relative, whatever it was. Right. It'll try to find something that is still, um, you know, on subject, even if it's not exactly 
uh, what you need. Right. And that's the nice thing about using it as kind of a, a search engine sort of a thing. Now that Microsoft is bringing that into its Bing, the new Bing is based off of ChatGPT4 and Microsoft's own search. Whereas regular ChatGPT, if you're just using like a free version or something, you're only using that language model based off of what it was already trained on. It has no ability to go out to the internet. Microsoft said, okay, we're going to take that. We are going to pair it with a search engine oh, God. and it can go get any data that's new and relevant and uh, live right. off of the internet. And, um, but is it going to set up like a, like a, like a search do. engine on so I'll it, get... It's exactly that. I mean, you can interact with it like a chat bot, like you do with chat GPT, or you can just type it in regular search style style, but it's there and it can, it, it, it's, it's crazy what it can do over and above what chat GPT can do because it has internet. I'm having internet a hard time access. just keeping up with what chat GPT can do because it's so, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like. You have to process, okay, now that you have all this information mm -hmm. so readily available to mm -hmm. you, what are you going to do with it? So people ask themselves questions. How am I going to make money doing it? How can we make it dirty? You know, that's that's always got to be there. How do, how do we sexualize this thing that's come out there? Mm -hmm. So money, make it dirty. And then how is it going to help me in my day-to-day -day life or make mm -hmm. money? And like so, So those are the things. So, I mean, I think about like how it's going to help me make money. <laughs> And I'm assuming that's how most, well, you know what? I'm not going to assume anything. That's, that's for me. I'm like. Um, I would assume that um, most people are going to end up using it for doing tasks that can be done well by it mm -hmm. um, quickly and easily rather than having to do it whatever way they were doing it before. Yeah. So. Time saving. Exactly. That, yeah. And that's where I've used it for. Mm -hmm. Like you did. You asked it for mm -hmm. writing copy for some kind. Yeah. You were no, trying I, to yeah. do something similar. It's really good at that. Mm -hmm. and um, a, a lot of that is, is going to continue. But as you found out while you were trying to get it to, to write something for you, um, it doesn't always get it the right way. And mm -hmm. so you have to keep putting stuff in there. You need to know a lot about whatever it is you're asking for it to give to you mm -hmm. in order to be able to judge whether or not what it gave to you is appropriate and good for you. Right. So it doesn't replace you. It enhances how quickly you can produce something. Yeah. So what I have to do is I have to take what it gives me and I'll it's it's been great for like idea starters. Mm -hmm. Um and and it's actually quite I mean some of the stuff is really really good. Some mm -hmm. of them like that's not even close, but it's cool to have that right. in front of me. I like Really good for brainstorming. Yeah. I it's hard to like I said it's hard for me to get my head around like all of the things that it can be used for. One of the things that we talked about um earlier was um writing term papers and things mm -hmm. like that. So um, what's the word? How are they going to keep kids from cheating? I don't cheating? think they are. I think that's going to go away. I think writing term papers is just not going to be a thing anymore. Mm. I get the feeling that eventually... I know, did not see that one coming. I colleges, <laughs> high schools, et cetera, where, you know, classes where a term paper was usually a giant chunk of your, your right. grade is going to go away. And they're going to have to find a different way to the testing that you can like maybe those the testing that you have to just do and write it's going to be more it testing. has to be well right. that and uh, i believe a lot of the teachers are asking for ai to be created to find out if ai was used to create the paper that's right. what i heard right I think, but yeah i don't think that's going to work that's um, key suffer. formations like you said about uh, how when she just went into uh, chat gpt and put in bad radio mm -hmm. Again, they'll be able to find the the <laughs> set the algorithm to set up to look for keywords or key phrasings that mm -hmm. were probably created. But I don't know. You're the man. Yeah, I get the feeling that um, it's anytime you're dealing with something like that, you're having to try to stay one step ahead of the people that are trying to get around whatever it is that's trying to catch you. Right. And the people that are trying to get around it are typically going to be farther ahead than the people that are trying to defend. So I, I just don't think it's going to be a thing. Actually, what you said makes sense as far as there's got to there's they're probably going to have to alter the education system to another way to make sure that the students are have a comp you know comprehensive understanding of what's going on besides writing it on a paper. Exactly, I think it's going to be something along the lines of doing the paper in class, mm -hmm. maybe doing it handwritten. God forbid, <laughs> but maybe. You'll never I mean, be able to read it. I, I certainly took a lot of tests in college that way myself. I mean, like when I was taking history exams, there was always a large uh, writing component and it was always on paper. It was never on your computer. 
Mike um, me too. Oh, for sure. <laughs> and so I, I imagine that might come back. I could imagine um, being required to do those kinds of things on computers that are have no access right, to just, chat GPT yeah. that doesn't mm -hmm. belong to you no some kind of terminal that mm -hmm. yeah. allows you to take the test just like you would take you know some uh, other tests nowadays mm -hmm. um, but they could also go with having what you need to be able to write about like a, a prompt or something that you need to be able to read and comprehend and then write about it well, rather than yeah. Hold that thought because we're going to get right back to that. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And welcome back to Bad Radio. This portion of Bad Radio is brought to you by Rachel Roach Realty, a Coldwell Banker Realtor. With a sea of realtors out there, choose one that thinks of you first and not their commission. 407 Two five two four five six six. Um, during the break, we were, I mean, I had to kind of like hold, you know, bring everything in because there's so many different directions that we could talk about with this AI. But really, I mean, what I want to talk about with John is um, how this is going to affect the world of IT because I think that ba businesses are going to be based off of this now, right? Well, certainly there are going to be businesses that use it as its its primary function. There's already businesses out there that are saying, okay, let us use ChatGPT to do this function inside of your business um, better by just, you know, creating uh, an interface in between ChatGPT and something, mm -hmm. some other type of program. Microsoft is already, you know, adding its own versions of ChatGPT because they're this giant uh, investor in open AI. They have access to it. They've added um, AI functions to Microsoft Office 365 already. It can, uh, for instance, do a, uh, it'll look at a, an Excel spreadsheet for you. that has got a whole bunch of data in it or, or a database of some sort. And it'll be able to give you information based off like reports. It will be able to build reports on the fly based off of that information. Okay. So can you upload stuff to it? I haven't even, I, the only thing I've done so far is just ask it questions or have it do stuff for me. But is For there... a free account, like what you're talking about, that's all you can do. Right. But like I said, Microsoft has added this functionality to Office 365 mm -hmm. so that if you pay an extra subscription to them, it will have the ability to inside of their programs, be able to take the data that's there and be able to give you inform information back about that data, be able to crunch the data for you without you having to do the, the number crunching yourself. I have, okay, so this is in theory. At some point, do you think I'll be able to say, okay, my weekly food budget is $350. Um, you know, I can say this is where I'm going to be shopping if it's Publix or whatever. And I would like you to produce for me a schedule of five meals per week. Yes. For this budget. And it you could already do that. Probably. Yes. <laughs> especially with really, yeah. especially with Microsoft's new Bing that can get that more live data for you. Um, I bet you could. You just have to feed it a I lot of the information yourself. I if I can take, can we keep yourself. it under X amount of calories? Yeah. <laughs> you probably could. You probably could. Seriously. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, wow. I have a spreadsheet. I do that. It's called Marito's Dinners yeah. where I like, write it all in yeah. on my spreadsheet. No, I could do it probably in like one minute. Type type all your stuff in I there. I mean, it, it may or may not spit out exactly what you want, but it'll certainly spit out something. It gets you real close. <laughs> That's fantastic. Can somebody show me how to do that? <laughs> just it's, tell it the it's things. It's literally just like yeah, what you said. Right. You, just, you, you go to the new Bing, you tell it the things that you want, and then it'll it'll try. Now, yeah. it, it's again, I'm allergic to X, Y, Z. It could absolutely get it wrong. Right. You might have to do it several times. You might have to give it, okay, this long prompt that it gives you all this Very information specific. that you want, and then it gives you a, a, a response. And then you'll look at the response and be able to, tell, okay, is this going to work for me or is this not going to work? Right. If it doesn't work, then you have to feed it more information. Right. That iteration is really key when you're dealing with these. Uh, right. Well, I noticed that you can, like I said, it says repurpose or regenerate, you mm -hmm. know, you can, mm -hmm. but you can add to it. You don't mm -hmm. have to type the whole original thing in again. No, it remembers what you've taught it. Mm -hmm. But that brings up a whole other problem is that if you're using one of these LLMs that's you know freely available on the internet in some kind like ChatGPT, or the new Bing, it will keep that data. Whatever it is that you fed it, it keeps it mm -hmm. and adds it to its database you know, or whatever. Its database. Yeah. So if you've got you know private data for your company, yourself, whatever that you don't want other people knowing about, 
you can't tell what it about to these that things. paid service thing does that is that keep, keep it yeah. to everything it public depends. as well it depends on the paid service and do you, what do it you is. have a paid service i do not okay absolutely not. i was wondering how much <laughs> absolutely not why not why, why do you say absolutely not because I'm, I'm not ready to spend money on something that isn't tailored enough to me to make sense okay okay because I, in until it's something that i can say okay i can use this it'll help me do this and It'll save me this amount of money, and so therefore it makes sense to pay mm-hmm. X, y, uh, right. X, Y, or Z amount of money. It doesn't make sense to me go out and buy it right. just to play with it because I can play with it for free. Got it. Because I don't have enough like information that I would want to use with it that isn't just publicly available. The things that I usually use it for are making that brainstorming copy or right. you know, writing an email the right way or creating a... A proposal or something like that are are the ways that I can think of, and then specific to me, scripting things. So yeah. I, if I need to do something and I want it to run on a script automatically without me having to do it, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not a king of scripting. I know it a little bit, but right. this is a king of scripting, and it can tell you exactly how to code something really well. And it'll that's, spit it out for me for free. Of, yeah, but I, mean, I don't need to pay for that. <laughs> right. But I mean, this leads me to the whole thing that one of your big things is like cybersecurity. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it, it's going to be able, people are going to be able to get <laughs> like break into systems left and right, right? Well, I mean, to an extent, maybe. I mean, it certainly gives people that have the interest um, more tools on how to get more data, more tools more quickly. Certainly, but more likely it's going to be times like what happened with Samsung recently. Samsung. I have a Samsung. What happened? <laughs> uh, Samsung lost a whole bunch of data in a way that, you know, it basically people inside of Samsung were using ChatGPT. They put in proprietary information into ChatGPT to get, you know, whatever it was they were asking for. It kept that data. Mm-hmm. Somebody else outside of Samsung asked ChatGPT for something. That data was relevant mm-hmm. and it spit it back out. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And so data was leaked when no one tried to. Right. But it happened anyway because that it's data open. is not siloed. Eventually, right. it, it's going to have to go in a different direction so that that data can be siloed. Right. An interesting bit I heard on the WAN show uh, with uh, Luna. I want to yeah, hear more about this. This, this, yeah. uh, this uh, company, uh, Linus Media Group, has a, a show that they do every Every Friday, you said it's, it's called, a podcast, right? It's, it's a show. It's a podcast. They do it live. But I mean, um, can, is, do they have, I is it on to YouTube? It. I mean, can you watch? You it? can watch it on YouTube okay. and Twitch on their own um, uh, streaming platform called Floatplane, uh, and then you can also get it as a podcast later or watch it on YouTube later as a you know something that's been recorded. Right. But they just do tech news, and it's great, and it's. Uh, one of the guys on it, Luke, is super into AI. And so every time they get together for one of these shows, he spends a significant amount of time talking about it because it just changes all the time. I know. He's got new stuff to talk about every mm-hmm, week and mm-hmm. some crazy thing happened and it's just, it's wild. But um, It's overwhelming. I find it overwhelming. Like I have a, a hard time processing it. To be quite honest, you're talking about AI in general. Yeah, yeah. just like the possibilities are. Oh, yeah. It's all like yeah. that's why I'm having. I have a hard time figuring out what are because inherently people are going to want to do like bad things with it. Yes. Of course. <laughs> and I've already heard some horrible, scary right. stories mm-hmm. of like some of the stuff. Um, and so part of me wants to shy away from it and just be like, oh. And then I'm like, okay, how are they going to make money? So they got to make money, mm-hmm. right? So. Um, right. So like for Microsoft, they're, they're making money by giving you ads in some way, shape or form while you're using it. So mm-hmm. they'll like link out to something that's that's related. Chat GPT, they're doing it for free, but only a little bit. If you want to actually uh, have access to Chat GPT as much as you want, you have to pay, pay for, for it. Pay for a subscription. Um, but yeah, I, what Luke was um, saying on the show recently was that his theory is that um, these LLMs are going to get to the point where uh, they're going to be so useful and so indispensable for big companies that they're going to bring them back in house. That the the days of having a large, you know, uh, data center internal to your company so that your data stays inside your company I was is going to come about back. That. Like all I, all I see is like I think of the word firewall, even though I know that's not the right thing, but a way 
that you, you know, you're part of this bigger network, but your part's secure. Like you have your own little room in this yeah. big universe. Yeah, they're, the servers and whatnot are going to come back local probably so that they can keep their uh, LLM able to access all of their data. All of their employees can use it and it doesn't get leaked anywhere. But would it still have access to outside information? It could in? still go. Like, yeah, it, like it could, it could absolutely bring in do that. Information in, but just can't push it back out. Exactly, because no one else would have access to it. Right. In, except inside the company. Yeah, well, we're going to keep on with this conversation when we get back from the break, so stay tuned. You're listening to Bad Radio. If you'd like more information, just go to BAADradio.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And welcome back to Bad Radio. This portion of the show is brought to you by Liberty Property Inspections. Your home is one of your most important investments, so don't trust it to just anyone. LibertyPropertyInspections.net, helping you protect your investment. Um, All right, so before break, we were talking about um, AI, and we're going to continue talking about AI because uh, we could probably talk about it forever. Mm -hmm. Um, And I was saying that it's a little hard for me to get my head around all of the applications that it can be used for. Do you feel that um, people are going to become so dependent on it that if it, like, we had, like, a major crash, then, you know, businesses are going to just go to a standstill? Uh, I don't know about businesses to a standstill, but a lot of stuff might not work very well anymore. Uh, one of the things that uh, that uh, Luke and Linus were thinking was was going to happen with with these types of AI is that it's it can already take bullet points and turn it into a business class type of email where it's properly formatted and yeah. you know full sentences and whatnot. It's going to get to the point where no one writes those anymore. They're just going to do the right. bullets. The AI will automatically create the email and send it out. The other side's going to read it, condense it back into bullet points. The person's going to read the bullet points and then respond with bullet points. And it's back to the AI. So only AIs are going to talk to each other directly oh <laughs> in real like sentences. Right. <laughs> so that could be a thing going forward where like, Writing real yeah. sentences is just not going to be a thing anymore, and so it, we're not going to be using our brains as much. This is sounding exactly. great. It, I mean, <laughs> it's something that, that can happen. Kid show Wally, yeah. You know kid show. It, you're talking about the movie, the movie Wally, yeah, with the robot. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Have you ever seen it? I'm not sure. Have you, Melissa Fox, ever seen Wally? You'd have to give of more course, I have. Pixar. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Wall E. Okay. Wall E. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Where every Love that movie. at some point, you know, Very humans deep. are no longer able to function. They yeah, live. I know. I think about that all the time. That's it's what, terrifying. That's the direction it feels that we're yes. going. And mm-hmm. for me, and, and I consider myself, I mean, I'm I'm Gen X. I right. know you're a millennial though, right? Or you guys are both millennials, right? I'm, I'm borderline. 82 is yeah. right there. Um, <laughs> I'm straight up like. Born 1973, and this stuff scares the hell out of me. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, you're talking about the ways that it helps you with making money and things like that, but I'm like, the whole thing just terrifies me. Between Chat GPT, and then you see like all these like avatar things that people just feed their images, and then they're just making these images. And oh, you're talking about AI generated art, yeah, oh, generated yeah, art, and then the the, the deep fakes. It's mm. like it's a whole. You can create a whole another world that looks real mm-hmm. just based off whatever you want it to do and say it freaks me oh, out my, my son has the headset it's not yeah. even the oculus it's like five steps above the oculus right. now where it's like he's got the monitors on like all part of his body mm-hmm. and he had he did he was dancing and and somebody turned it into a full avatar where and i was like that's really cool but it's also <laughs> really i meant bizarre but yeah they can just live in their own little world right. that they've created that's yeah. perfect for them. It really, it really, but it's not real. Scares me yeah. from a perspective of how do you know what's real anymore? Right. And that's what that's one thing I was going to ask you is my like, head hurt. <laughs> is that a thing that uh, like your industry would ha- like be focused on, like being able to determine? I imagine that that will absolutely be a thing in the security world mm-hmm. where. Uh, being able to determine whether or not something that's sent to you, some kind of media that's sent mm-hmm. to you, is real. Um, it's already a thing. Uh, right. There are certainly companies that will will take looks at deep fakes and determine that, is, yes, it is, is a deep fake. What does deep fake mean? So it's essentially a way to create a video or audio 
that sounds and looks oh, like the real I've thing. Oh, i Tom Cruise but it ones. Isn't. It's crazy. There's a ton of them. And it's scary when it comes like political and stuff like that. It's like, exactly. I mean, oh, I'm not going to get so much into politics, but there was so much with like, real people saying certain things and how it dissuaded like so much of of a nation and then if you think oh, about geez. you can just make things fake and people are gonna change their whole mind off of something that's not even real, real. because they can't tell the difference it's right. insane the, the people are going to have to learn to be Think more for skeptical. Yeah, but that's gonna that's a whole generational thing. It is. It's gonna be there's gonna be a cutoff where it's like anyone older than this, like you pretty much need to have a teenager <laughs> to be able to I mean, like tell you, you Honestly, know? Angela, Gen Xers and above, I feel like are at that level where you you grew up thinking that any media, a photo was real. That's what it period. was. Period. Right. Mm-hmm. And that if it was written, it was probably true. Yep. If you saw it in a photo Photos don't lie. It is lie. very hard for us, yes. So not true anymore. Mm-hmm. And so your age and older are are in this situation where you are can be more easily manipulated, manipulated. as a result. Mm-hmm. It scares the heck out of me. And I happen to have a, uh, a family member that's close to me that is really gullible when it comes to these kinds of things, even before deep fakes and whatnot. And I shudder to think what people like mm-hmm. him might believe right. just because they see it someplace and think it's a reputable source, right. and even if it isn't. Well, well, I meant it's like the people that before it's like, okay, I work for so and so. There's something wrong with your computer, and then they get on their computer and they give them the password, oh, yeah. and next thing you know, still there, bam, gone. <laughs> I mean, it's still a thing all the time. Well, even people who do know that it's not real, like have you? Ha- I'm sure you probably have heard that story of somebody. Uh, I think he's a Belgian man that committed suicide. He was talking to an AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the AI pretty much convinced him. He was like 30 years old. So he wasn't what? that old. He had kids. He was married and was talking to this AI chatbot, essentially. Mm-hmm. And at first it was giving him like he was like asking for ways and stuff like that and gave him uh, like a help self-help lines, but then started like talking him into and and I'm sure he knows that this is an AI thing. So it's like it, it just gets. I'm sorry, I'm taking this really dark. <laughs> no, <laughs> it, really it dark, dark. But but it like with be. just how everything with social media, and I feel like in general, people like mental health wise, mm-hmm. kind of is not the greatest right now. So you pair that with like this AI stuff. So even if you do know it's not real, I just like, wonder. Uh, you know, having kid, young kids right now. Yes, I'm wondering. Okay. Are they going to grow up just like not trusting anything? anything? <laughs> I know. Or is it going to go some sort of weird happy medium? Or are they going to go the other direction to, that, you know, older people already are susceptible. To, they just believe everything. It, I don't know. I have a 15 year old. I just talked to her about actually this story that I was just talking about. And she was like, yeah, mom, like I'm going to grow up like with AI around me like it's it's already a part of the thing and I asked I actually asked chat GPT what are some concerns regarding young adults and teens using AI and some of the things they were talking about were like privacy because it collects mm-hmm. all your large amounts of da- exactly. data addiction like if you're so used to using it all the time misinformation which is what we're talking about mm-hmm. uh, cyber bullying because you know <laughs> in-person bullying isn't bad enough so we mm-hmm. <laughs> have that and social I- isolation because your um, especially young people are dependent on AI services or could be mm-hmm. um, stop interacting with people in the real world. So it's like, I I mean, it's it's amazing the technology and what it can do, but none of it is like really exciting to me because right. I'm like I'm like this can the good part of it uh, for, for me is so small. Like your brain can already do these things. It just is time and it it, mm-hmm. it makes you smarter to be making creating full sentences and things. <laughs> these are good things for us to be doing, you know? So I don't know that the time saving aspect of it is worth the swap of all of yeah. the negative. And like who, it's insane. Who put the information in there in the first place? You know, which who do you mean? Mm-hmm. Which, what do you mean by like, it puts like the information had, in it? When it launched, it had a whole bunch of information. Oh, okay. The company the that company, built it. Yeah. Yeah. And are, I mean, uh, do they put their uh, ideas and their opinions? And Absolutely. Everything? I mean, that's been a problem with AI since before LLMs. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, when you when you create algorithms, say you know Google search or YouTube um, algorithm, those are all built from a perspective of whoever it is that programmed it in the first place. So they can because you absolutely see, like naive me, I'm sitting there going, oh, it's 
it's just information. It's more than just information. It's mm-hmm. somebody it's it's slanted. There is a slant but on what information is handed back to you. Even right. if all the information is true, there's a slant on what information is provided. Wow. But this other version that's connected to Microsoft and being mm-hmm. able to get the internet, so now that they're, they're able to, like, infinitely. Exactly. Get... That's what it's, that can be scary right. about it. Oh, all right. Well, you know what? We're going to lighten up the mood when we get back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. We're going to talk about the good parts of AI, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Bad Radio, brought to you by Premier Couple Superstore, because a couple that plays together stays together. And I want to give out a huge thank you to so many more of our sponsors, including Bolts Legal, Fear No Storm with BoltsLegal.com, 33 Tanning Spa with locations in Altamont Springs and Longwood, and Andrews Law PA. You can visit her at AndrewsLawPA.com. And Crazy Muscle Nutrition in Longwood. I called Zach earlier in the week. And I said, are you available on 420 for to do a show? Oh, <laughs> Is he like, yes, yes. immediately. Oh, He's like, it's Zach. my favorite day of the year. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I knew he would. I was like, <laughs> um, all right. So we, we, were, we, we talked about AI pretty much for the, this whole hour. And we could talk about it for probably days more. Um, but what I really want to talk about right now is uh, Forge IT Consulting and how AI is going to play a part in that. But then also, I'm at, what are some of the other things that are going on with, with your business right now? I mean, what are some of the most common things that you're seeing? Same old or have you seen new stuff coming up? I would say it's it's really comes down to the, the same sorts of things most of the time. It's adding security to companies that don't already have it because, you know, it's a small business that doesn't know any better. And they meet me and I tell them, hey, this is what you can do. And hey, it's a lot cheaper than you might think. And yeah. it's not going to disrupt you too much. And hey, great. We're all better now. Um, but I did get a, a client recently that um, is rather unique. They're a, a, a cabinetry company. Okay. And they have some really old computers that go along, that are built into their their you know the machines that actually make cabinetry. So like a giant saw and the automation of that saw is still running on Oh, a Windows XP machine. Oh, I thought I you were mean, going to say like DOS. Not quite that old, <laughs> but it's still, it's Windows XP and it's even Service Pack 2 and not Service Pack 3, which, and it's the hard drive on that computer is, I swear to God, only 50 gigabytes. <laughs> this thing is old, but it still has to work because replacing it isn't just replacing the computer. It's replacing the entire machine equipment. so it's like tens of thousands of dollars so it was really fun to go in and be able to go and use like you know the, the expertise from 10 years ago on how That's to actually really how cool. to do this stuff because you know if you if you weren't around then then you don't know all the little you know bits and pieces that you needed to know to be able to make this stuff work mm-hmm. the way that they need it to work because they've got computers that are all the way up to you know windows 10 windows 11 mm-hmm. in their back office they need to be able to communicate back to those windows xp machines and i was able to help them get the, that working again so no that, that's that was fun really, no that is really cool i could actually still going super me. old school i know i mean <laughs> i learned how i i learned how to use a computer on dos i mean before there was even oh, same here yeah oh, yeah i remember that before like the before there was even you know I windows played games on wow, dos that yes. were ascii games me in, too <laughs> when wow. i was five years old on my, on my little computer in our basement <laughs> The one that was like a little stick figure that go back and forth. You'd bounce a ball back and forth. Okay. That was like one of my favorites. But um, <laughs> anyway, so, okay. Um, so the security and um, so you do you think with AI you were talking about, it's just going to help you do your job a little bit faster. Faster or better. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to can look you things trouble- up. You said you can troubleshoot with it? To an extent, yes. Um, one of the... One of the things they brought up on that WAN show is specifically about, you know, AI being able to take over um, the tasks of other businesses, um, like being able to take over, um, you know, level one support desks. Mm-hmm. Sure. It can look up the instructions on how to do basic troubleshooting for whatever, like right. your Wi-Fi or your, right. your mic isn't working or all the things that, you know, every now and then I'll need to go look it up real quick and, and do the, the steps in case, you know, the, the steps that I know by, by heart don't work. But can work, it do but, it? Do you think it'll it ever won't be able to do go what in you and, do? It won't go in and actually do it. Okay. It'll, it can help somebody else do it. It can teach them how to do it. But at the same time, it can only do it It'll only be able to do it from a general standpoint. Yeah. It can't, mm-hmm. because the person that is, you know, making use of chat GPT doesn't have the background, doesn't know enough about how their computer works. 
they can't give the prompts that ChatGPT needs in order to get the more specific answer. Can you automate it to do stuff like update a blog on a website? I don't think ChatGPT mm -hmm. specifically can do that right now. Um, it might have a plugin that allows it to do that, but it's it's one of those things where a third party company will yes. create something like that, where it uses ChatGPT right. and a APIs um, to check with ChatGPT what should be done, mm -hmm. right. and then ChatGPT responds with what should be done, and then their program goes out and actually to does automate it. it. Yeah, because yeah, as we were talking about before, is like you know when you. I always say things as basic they are. In order to keep your website, you know, up on the search engine sheet there, you know, the most, making changes to your website is one of the biggest things you can do, right? Because that's, mm -hmm. so if you have the AI set up to make daily changes, then mm -hmm. you're always going to be in like up and, in the beginning, but then everybody's going to be doing that. Right. <clears throat> right. And so as a result, uh, the algorithm is going to have to change and not use that as much. And eventually it will, I'm, I'm sure for exactly those kinds of reasons. Mm -hmm. um, that's essentially just scripting. And ChatGPT can make scripting a lot more powerful. But at the end of the day, it's just scripting. It's mm -hmm. all absolutely fascinating. But I, like I said, I think as far as as far as far business goes, I, I love the fact that it will give me I, idea starters. It's going to help mm -hmm. me. Um, eventually, it's going to help me make a Smurito family meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> She's looking to do that as so. soon as she gets home today. <laughs> Because it's like I have a meal plan, but I don't ever like budget it out with right. money. But if I would say I can't spend more than three fifty, right, and then it will say, okay, well you're eating pretty much, you know. I hope you like ramen. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, um, so I know that we you've been on the show before, and mm -hmm. I know that we're like in our very last <laughs> segment here. But go ahead and list out all of the things that uh, Forge IT Consulting does. Okay, so that's a long list. Mm -hmm. So I'll be a little bit more generalized. Mm -hmm. So I work on networks, I, which includes firewalls, switching, Wi-Fi, internet connections, anything having to do with that. Mm -hmm. I work on individual computers. I work on servers. I help um, find uh, cloud services and um, applications that you know a business might need for, for them to be able to do what they need to do. I can do that kind of research for them. And then I can help secure all of it. Okay. And so back it all up. <laughs> you spend a lot of your time on security? I find that security is the thing that companies know the least about and have the least mm -hmm. infrastructure already in place. So that's the thing that I talk about first, especially since it's one of those things that it's just not being thought about. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, after that gets set up, mostly it's going to be stuff that's just hey, this thing doesn't work anymore or something <laughs> broke or my printer doesn't work because- That would be me. <laughs> printers never work. Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's that's just the thing. Yeah, well, I would have never figured out why my printer didn't work, but- you They're know. made by the same people who do the shake machines at McDonald's. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I'm convinced. I'm, <laughs> printers and absolutely. shake machines, yeah. Well, my printers work nonstop. That's good. Since and my shirt here is mm -hmm. proof of that because I did print this. Did you? Yes, on, on your printer shirt. at home. On my printer at wow, home. Wow, didn't know that was and a I thing. Neither. And I ironed it on. <laughs> you nice. did such a good job. <laughs> but I mean, that's what I said. I was like, yeah. Angela's mind said that Angela wants We're a making new. It. I'm making a bad radio shirt. It would. There Cute. was nothing in the world <laughs> so that was going to stop me from making that shirt. And nothing did. But the no. printer <laughs> would have stopped me <laughs> if the printer didn't work. I would have been like, I would have just had to like. Like not get a new. I mean, it's, it's just really basic stuff like that. <laughs> that I mean, would have been so funny. <laughs> there's also you know clients that are like, oh, okay, I have to let go a person. That's happened uh, a few times recently. And Ooh, you can ask ChatGPT to let somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest thing to do anytime we're letting somebody go is let your IT person know before you need oh, to let that's them go. Smart. Because there's a lot of stuff that you want to do to keep your business secure right. in the event that you're letting somebody go. That if you let your IT person know first, they can take care of it ahead of time or on time without it being, you know, yeah. left out there. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's very good advice. Um, so we're like wrapping up the show. I can't even believe it. That was a super fun show. We really had was a it? good time. <laughs> so, um, so like I said, we listed off the things that you do. And so what are some of the things that you're looking for, like as far as referrals go? I would love to be referred to uh, additional law firms. I think okay. law firms. Um, any, any law firms in general? It doesn't matter what. You know what? what it, not, it doesn't really matter. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. Um, 
No, I, I, I don't have a particular one in mind, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I enjoyed working with them because I'm my wife's a lawyer, and mm -hmm. so I, I get a lot of what goes on in a law firm already just by listening okay. to her. All right, real quick, what's your contact information? So you can reach me at 407-318-2671 or at forgeitconsulting.com. That's F-O-R-G-E, IT, consulting. Com. Melissa. All right, and Striking Brand on all social media platforms. And I am Angela with Bad Radio. That's Angela at B-A-A-D Radio. Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful week. Good times. <laughs> we'll check them again later. Go to B-A-A-D Radio.com if you want to network with the ladies. <laughs>